the internet. A place of all that is good oh and weird it's so and bad. People have posted my personal information and that of my parents online. But wait, how did it come to this? They've been called the 26 words that created the internet. No provider or user of an interactive computer service shall be treated as the publisher or speaker of any information provided by another information content provider. In essence, platforms would no longer be liable for the content users posted. And that law allowed the internet to flourish. Without the 26 words in section 230, the internet that we know today would look very different. The internet, call it what you will, is probably uh, the most exciting new development uh, in the history of any of us uh, that are now living. Section 230 is a law that Congress passed in 1996 that protects websites and other platforms from liability for information that third parties post on their sites. To say that uh, it is so infallible and it's so complicated that you can do nothing to protect uh, the kids uh, from uh, Pornography for profit, uh, I think, is somewhat ludicrous. Section 230 has allowed great things like Wikipedia and Facebook and Twitter, but it also has allowed people to weaponize many of those platforms anonymously. Tech firms have essentially enjoyed this incredible immunity, this incredible freedom to let whatever happens on their platforms happen for, for 25 years now. The killer live-streamed video of his massacre so that the world could see it. And now, this controversial legal protection for internet companies is being folded into trade deals and exported, including U.S.-Mexico-Canada agreement, the USMCA. A new trade agreement with Japan and negotiating objectives with the European Union and Britain have also had language reflecting Section 230 inserted. I want to congratulate Boris Johnson on a terrific victory. It means a lot of trade, tremendous amount of trade. They want to do business with us so badly even as she triumphantly announced that USMCA was moving forward. This is a day we've all been working to. Nancy Pelosi conceded she had failed to remove the controversial clause. I had one disappointment, which was 260, but I was too, 230. I was too late coming in on it. Among online activists, Section 230 has become increasingly controversial in recent years. Last year, there were 45 million videos or images of children being abused uploaded onto the internet and that's the price we're supposed to pay that's an unacceptable price i'm all in favor of greater user privacy but not at the expense of children getting trafficked not at the expense of, of drugs like fentanyl ending up um, you know on the same systems where my children are trading pictures with their friends british lawmakers are concerned that u.s trade policy is on a collision course with flagship online harms legislation already in the works in the UK. If the, the first proposal for a UK-US trade agreement included that as well, what we would have to understand is if we accepted that, it could totally undermine anything we're trying to do in, in creating laws that could hold the tech companies to account for content on their platforms. So, you know, we need to be clear up front that that's not something we're prepared to do. In many other countries, including many other Western democracies, the rule is that if you receive a notice of something being defamatory, you have the choice of either taking it down or standing in the shoes of the person who drafted it. Uh, in the United States, because of Section 230, you don't have that decision to make. Desire among Democrats for a legislative agenda beyond impeachment has meant compromise. The bill is passed. On USMCA. The silver lining of impeachment and this witch hunt, that's the reason they approved USMCA, so that's okay with me. Team Trump is taking the battle for the internet, and who controls it, to the global stage.